This video will show you how to install the RDS2 hardware onto any Mavlink compatible drone. Locate the top of the drone and remove any canopy, cover, or battery tray that may be blocking access to the flight controller board and electronics. Remove any mounting kits and gimbals or sensors from the drone. The RDS2 is designed to work with any standard 12mm floating rail system. Depending on your drone, you may have to modify or customize a mount that better suits your frame. Take the 6-pin to 3-pin telemetry cable from the accessories box and remove it from the bag. This will be soldered to the telemetry cable that is used with your specific flight controller. Please follow the diagram when soldering. Take the 6-pin to 3-pin telemetry cable and push the 6-pin in with the flight controller connector up through the main frame. If it is easier on your specific frame to go from the top down, make sure you insert the RDS2 connector side or the 3-pin side of the cable into the frame so that it can be pulled out from the bottom. Find the telemetry 1 or telemetry 2 port on the flight controller and plug in the 6-pin connector. In order to power the RDS2, you will need to route power down from the drone from the bottom of the frame. This can be wired into the drone's main power source, solder a female XT30 connector to the power cable, and route it out the bottom of the frame. For this example, the power is routed through the frame and into the main power distribution. The RDS2 is running off the drone's main 6S or 24 volt power source. The XT30 end is routed through the main frame for easy access to the RDS2 power cable. Locate the drone's 12mm mount rails. These will be used to mount the RDS2 to the drone's floating rail mount system. Slide the rails first through the rail clamps on the drone mount, through the RDS2 mounting holes, and then into the second set of clamps on the other side of the RDS2. This can be a tight fit and a little bit tricky, so a second set of hands can't help. Before positioning the RDS2 on the rails, plug in the male XT30 connector on the RDS2's power harness into the female XT30 connector on the drone. Position the RDS2 on the mounting rail so that the CG of the drone is lined up with the hook of the RDS2. There may be space on either side of the RDS2 case and the rail clamps. You will need to use spacers to correctly position the RDS2 on the rails. Here we are using 3D printed spacers. The spacers will also prevent the RDS2 from sliding during operation. If you feel something is installed incorrectly, follow this diagram for the correct order. After positioning the RDS2 correctly on the rails and installing spacers, tighten the rail clamp screws in order to prevent the rails from sliding during operation. Plug the 3-pin telemetry cable into the board located on the side of the RDS2. Use a pair of tweezers or small needle nose pliers if needed. Be very careful not to damage the wires as they will be somewhat fragile around the connector. The plug input is the first location on the board closest to the outer case of the RDS2. You can route the telemetry cable down the side of the RDS2 case. Use cable ties to clean up any extra wire to prevent getting caught. Secure the cable with a cable tied to the standoffs on the frame, if available. You can also do this with the power cable. Install the included LiDAR module face down on the right landing gear position at the bottom, as shown here. You will have to provide your own mount to secure it to the frame. Here, we are using a 3D printed LiDAR mount. Run the LiDAR cable up the landing gear leg using cable ties to secure it. Plug the LiDAR cable into the port located in the rear of the RDS2 below the buttons and on the innermost part of the board. Reinstall any necessary sensors or cameras, then screw on the lid and battery tray. Watch the second part of this video series to learn how to install software for your RDS2.